Welcome to the world of managing identities. As system administrators, system engineers and infrastructure engineers, we spend a significant amount of time every day managing identities in organizations. These identities can be user accounts, applications or other resources. Over 15 years, Microsoft Active Directory has maintained its premier position in the market by helping organizations build their identity infrastructures. As a directory service, it stores an organization's identity data in a central repository and allows us to arrange it in a hierarchical organizational structure to satisfy the business needs. Over the years, Microsoft has been releasing new version of Active Directory with new features and enhancements. In this video series, I would share with you the knowledge using in-depth analysis and best practices in order to use the Microsoft Active Directory service and its components in a secure, efficient way to address modern identity infrastructure requirements. Even though the information that I am sharing is more for administrators and engineers who have basic knowledge of Active Directory. It is not a bad idea to refresh your memory about the building blocks of Microsoft Active Directory service. Before we dive into advanced topics, in this video, you will learn about benefits of using Active Directory, understanding Active Directory components, Understanding Active Directory Objects, Active Directory Server Roles Benefits of using Active Directory I was working on an Active Directory restructuring project for a Fortune 500 company. According to the company policy, I had to travel to their headquarters to perform the project tasks. I walked into the company reception area after I explained who I am and why I was there, a nice lady at the reception, Lynn, handed me a set of forms to fill in. They asked me for my personal details such as name, phone number, how long I will be there, and in which department. Once I filled out the form, I handed them over to Lynn and she had to make a few calls to verify whether my visit was expected and confirm my access to different buildings with the respective department manager. Then she made a card with my details and handed it over to me. She instructed me on how to use it and which building I was allowed into. When you think about the process, you'll find that it contains the function of a directory service. The forms that Lynn handed over to me contained certain questions to help her understand who the person was. They were predefined set of questions and I had to answer them in order to register my information in their system. Once I submitted the form, she didn't hand over the card right away. She made calls to verify my identity and also confirm which building I would have access to. Then my details were registered with their system and it generated an electronic card that had my photo and a barcode. With that, I became a part of their system and that particular card was my unique identity within their organization. There would be no other visitor which this, with the same barcode and identification number at the same time. If I needed to get access to buildings, I needed to tap the card at the entrance. Could I use my name or any other card to get through? No. The locking system of the building doors only recognized me if I presented the correct card. 
so having a unique identity in that system was not enough i needed to present it in the correct way to get the required access i went to another building and tried to tap the card even when i used it correctly the doors wouldn't open the guard in the building asked for my card once i handed it over he scanned it with a barcode reader and checked some information on his computer screen then he informed me that i was not allowed into the building and guided me to the correct building this means that my information can be accessed from any building though their system to verify my identity and access permission when i used the card in the correct building it allowed me to step in in the system it first verified my identity and then checked whether i was authorized to work in that facility but if i was authorized the system allowed access if not it rejected my request to enter when i entered and left the building i did not have to record my time but the managers in the department knew how many hours i had worked as my check in and check out times had been recorded in the system and they could review the information any time the system acts as an authentication and authorization system it uses different protocols and standards to manage and protect identities saved in the central database this is the primary need of a directory service every organization has its own organizational structure the most common way is to group roles assets and responsibilities into different departments such as sales it production and quality assurance apart from skills and knowledge employees use company resources such as applications and hardware devices to achieve company goals in order to use their resources efficiently it's important to have some kind of access control in place the resources should be available for the required user at the required time This is very easy if all the data about the user applications and resources is recorded in a central repository and uses uses authentication and authorization to manage resources. This is how the directory service was born. Different service providers have different directory services. For example, the Novel directory service Oracle directory service and Red Hat directory service the Microsoft Active Directory service is the most commonly used directory service in modern enterprises let's talk about the first benefit of active directory centralized data repository active directory stores the identity information of users applications and resources in a multi master database this database is a file called ntds.dat this database is based on joint engine technology that is jet database engine the data in this database can be modified using any alternative domain controller the active directory database can store some 2 billion objects users can use the identity data stored in active directory from anywhere in the network in order to access resources administrators can manage authentication and authorization of the organizational identities from a centralized location without directory service identities would be duplicated across different system and add administrative overhead to manage replication of data 
there are organizations that use a single domain controller but when it comes to complex business requirements such as branch offices redundancy it is required that they have multiple domain controllers if the identities are managed from a centralized system it's important that each domain controller be aware of the changes that have been made to the active directory database let's say user jane in the sales department forgets her password and requests the it department to res reset it in 30 minutes time she is going to be working from a branch office located in different city the it administrator resets her password from the headquarters domain controllers dc01 in order to have a successful login from the branch office this change to the directory needs to be replicated over to the domain controller in the branch office dc05 microsoft active directory has two types of replication if a domain controller advertises the change changes made on that particular domain controller to a neighboring domain controllers it is called as outbound replication if a domain controller accept changes advertised by the neighboring domain controllers it is called as inbound replication the replication connections and replication schedule can be modified based on the business requirement high availability high availability is important for any business critical system in an organization this is applicable to domain controllers too on other systems in order to implement high availability we need to make software or hardware changes with built in fault tolerance capabilities active directory domain controllers do not need additional changes a multi pass a multi master database and replication of domain controllers allows user to continue with authentication and authorization from any available domain controller at any time security data and identity security are very important in modern businesses we are living in a world where identity is the new perimeter a significant portion of this video is focused on how to use active directory features to secure your identity infrastructures from emerging threats active directory allows you to use different authentication types group policies and workflows to protect the resources in your network even applications benefit from this technologies and methodologies to secure the identities used within applications this help administrators build different security rule based on department and groups in order to protect data and workloads it also forces individual to follow organizational data and network security standards auditing capabilities setting up advanced security policies will not be enough to protect your identity infrastructure periodic audits will help you understand new security threats active directory allows you to capture and audit even occurring in your identity infrastructure they can be related to user authentication directory service modification or access violation it also helps you collect data from a centralized location which will help you troubleshoot authentication and authorization issues users may have single sign on in an organization there are different applications in use each of those applications has a different authentication mechanism it will be difficult to maintain different user credentials to authenticate a different applications most application vendors now support integrating integration with active directory for authentication this means that with active directory credentials 
you can authenticate on different systems and applications used by your organizations. You will also need to keep typing your credentials. I'm sorry, you will not need to keep typing your credentials to get access. Once you authenticate on a computer, the same session will be used to authenticate other Active Directory integrated applications. Schema modifications. Any kind of database has its own structure called schema. This is also applicable to an Active Directory database. This schema describes all objects in Active Directory. By knowing the schema, you can modify or extend it. This is important for the development of Active Directory integrated applications. Microsoft, Microsoft publishes Active Directory Service Interface ADSI with a set of COM interfaces and it can be used to access Active Directory service features from different network providers. Application developers can use it to develop their application to be Active, uh, Active Directory integrated and publish it to the directory. Users can search for the services through Active Directory and applications can access Active Directory objects as required. Querying and indexing. By maintaining, maintaining a central data repository, Active Directory also allows users and application to query object and retrieve accurate data. If I need to find a user Jane, account, I do not need to know which branch he is in or what department he belongs to. With a simple Active Directory query, I will be provided with the information about the user account. In a manner similar to when we add a new object to the directory, objects will publish its attribute and make it available for users and applications for query. These are the these are some of the main capabilities of Active Directory service and these features will be explained in details later in the series including how to plan implement and maintain them within your identity infrastructure. Alright guys so these were some of the benefits of using Active Directory as part of the environment or an organization. So let's talk about Active Directory components. Active Directory components can be divided into two main categories, logical components and physical components. When you design your identity infrastructure, you need to consider both components, logical components of the Active Directory structure can change at any given time according to business requirements. But you won't be able to easily modify the physical components compared to the logical components. The placement of these components will define the effective security, reliability, efficiency, security, reliability and manageability of your identity infrastructure. So it's crucial that we get it right in the beginning. Before we move on, before we move on to advanced identity infrastructure planning. Let's talk about the logical components. Each business has its own hierarchical organization layout. It may contain multiple branch offices, multiple group of companies and many different departments. Each of these components in the business carries out different operations. Operations in the sales departments are completely different from the IT department. Everyone is born to the company by following different operational guidelines and targets. When we define the identity infrastructure, we need to match it with the company hierarchical layout in order to manage resource and security effectively. Logical components of the Active Directory helps you structure 
and identity infrastructure by consider considering design administration extensibility security and scalability the active directory logical structure contains two types of objects objects can be either containers object or leaf objects container object can be associated with other objects in the logical structure leaf objects are the smallest components in the logical structure they will not have any other child object associated the act let's talk about forests the active directory forest represents a complete active directory instance it is made of one or more domain and domain trees i will be explaining what domain and domain trees are in details later in the series each each domain has its own characteristic boundaries and resources allocated but at the same time it shares a common logical structure schema and directory configuration within the forest domains in the forest can contain any domain name the first domain controller in the active directory service deployment is important when you create the first domain it will create the forest as well then the first domain will become the forest root domain a domain tree contains its own root domain but forest can contain multiple root domains when microsoft releases a new active directory service version new features are born to the forest and domain functional levels if you want to use active directory domain services 2016 forest level feature your directories active directory forest should use the windows server 2016 forest functional level before windows 2012 r2 forest functional level upgrades were one way now it is possible to roll back to the lower forest functional level if required this is if the forest functional level is lower it's allowed to add the latest domain controller version for example if the forest functional level is 2008 it is allowed to install the domain controller inside the forest with the operating system windows server 2016 but this does not mean it can use features provided by windows directory services 2016 until it upgrades its domain and forest functional levels if you upgrade the forest functional level to windows server 2016 you can have only domain controllers running a minimum of windows server 2016 now let's talk about the domains The domains contains the logical components to achieve administrative goals in the organization. By default, the domain become the security boundary for the object inside it. Each object has its own administrative goals. Individuals in tribes. I'm sorry. all the objects in the domain are part of the common database also everyone every objects in the domains are also controlled by the security rules defined this security rules are only applicable within the particular domain and are not valid for any object outside the domain boundaries a domain also allows you to set smarter administrative boundaries within the organizations in the same video previously i explained that a forest can contain multiple domains managing a forest is difficult as its administrative boundary is large but the domain allows you to set smaller administrative targets active directory is divided into multiple partitions to improve efficiency 
the domain is also a partition of active directory when i described the active directory forest i had mentioned that every domain inside the forest shares the same schema each of the domain controllers also has a copy of domain partitions and it is shared only by the domain controllers within the same domain tree all the information about objects in a particular domain is saved in the domain partition this ensures that only the required data is replicated across the domain trees and forests the active directory domains functional level defines the active directory capabilities with every new version of directory services new features are added to the domain functional level in order to use the features within the domain the domain functional level needs to be upgraded the version of the domain functional level you can run on the domain dependent depends on the forest functional level you cannot have a domain functional level higher than the forest functional level now let's talk about a domain tree a domain tree is a collection of domains that reflects the organizational structure domain inside the domain tree have a parent child relationship the first domain in the domain tree is called the parent domain this is the root domain as well all other domains in the domain tree are called the child domain there will be only one parent domain in a domain tree in some documentation the child domain is also called a subdomain when dealing with internet domains sometimes it is required to create additional placeholders a sub url for example rebeladmin.com is the domain name and used for the website an organization needed to host another website in order to maintain support requests but it needs to use the same contiguous name space to do that we can create another folder in the domain root and create a dns record for support.rebeladmin.com subdomain an active directory forest can contain non contiguous domain name but within the domain tree it will share the same contiguous namespace in the previous example rebeladmin.com is the parent domain for the domain tree it has two child domains it.rebeladmin.com and sales.rebeladmin.com as you can see it shares the same rebeladmin.com namespace similarly when it goes down in the next level in the domain tree it shares the namespace from the preceding level each of the child domain maintains its own domain partition this configuration data will be re replicated only to the domain controllers in the same child domain when the child domain is introduced to the domain tree it will automatically create a trust relationship with the parent domain if two child domains on the different domain trees want to authenticate authenticated traffic must pass through the forest root domain organizational unit previously i explained how we can group the objects using domains and forest but within the organization objects can be categorized into different groups considering the operations operational structure geographical location or roles and responsibilities as an example organizations have multiple departments we can convert each of the department into child domain and group each of the department objects but the child domain needs a separate domain controller as it will have a separate domain partition 
isn't there a better way to group these objects within the domain? That's where the organizational units come in. Organizational units help group objects on a smaller scale within the domain. The most common way is to group objects that have similar security and administrative requirement together. For example, there are more than 50 users in the sales department. The sales department uses common shared folders and printers. Their security requirements for data and networks are similar. We can create an OU called sales and group and pull all the sales department users into it. We can apply security policies to the OU level. Now, instead of the user level, when deploying a domain controller, it creates a default OU structure to segment the most common object types, such as the users, computers, and domain controllers. The administrator can add, remove, and delete OU as required. Once an object is assigned to an OU, it, inherited, it inherits security settings and permissions applied on the OU level. If the same object is moved to a different OU, then it will apply the settings from the new OU and discard the settings that were applied from the previous OU. Organizational units also help delegate administrative control to individuals on specific tasks. Domain administrators have privileges to manage an, any object within the domain, but it's impossible to create administrators and assign them to manage objects and resources on an organizational level. For these administrators, the OU will be the security boundary. They will not be able to modify any other object outside that particular OU. I would be explaining delegation, delegated administrators later in the series. OU are container, uh, container objects. They can be associated with similar or other objects. Similar to the domain parent-child relationship, OUs also can contain child OUs. These are also called nested OUs. OUs also can contain objects, object types such as user groups, contacts, computers, organizational units, and printers. In the previous example, rebeladmin.corp has a sales department in the OU hierarchy. The first thing you need to do is create an OU called sales department. All the regional offices do have their own sales department. Most of the security and administrative requirement requirement for objects in the sales departments are the same, but creating OUs based on geographical areas will allow domain administrator to delegate control over those objects to individuals or groups in the regional office. Also, if a specific security policy needs to be applied to a regional office sales department, it can be applied on a relevant OU level rather than applying it to the entire sales department across the branch office. All the child OUs inherited, inherit the permission applied from its parent OU. In the previous example, individuals or groups who have permission to control sales department objects have control over the objects in Europe, Asia and North America's OUs by default. The OU hierarchy is independent. It is not going to affect any other domain OU hierarchy. The OU also can contain objects from the same domain only. All right. Now let's talk about the physical components of Active Directory. Previously in the logical components, I explained the logical uh, components of Active Directory. Now it's time to look into the physical components. Even though the logical and physical components are equally important in the Active Directory domain servers design, 
they are important they are independent i'm sorry replication is the core feature of the active directory domain services if the system has multiple domain controllers changes made in one domain controller should be replicated to the other physical components placement can affect active directory replication in a certain way logically components can be easily rearranged compared to physical components domain controllers the domain controller is a computer that runs a windows server operating system and holds the active directory domain services role it can be either a physical server or a virtual server that is hosted on a vmware or hyper v the domain controller holds the directory partition that will be replicated to the other domain controllers in the same domain the domain can only uh, can have any number of domain controllers the number of domain controllers is dependent on the enterprise's size geographical placements and network segmentation in the windows nt times it uses multiple domain controllers but it maintains a single master schema this means that directory changes can be made from a specific domain controller only after windows 2000 they have been support for the multi master mode any object level changes made in one domain controller will be replicated to all other domain controllers that said some of the active directory related operations role changes can be modified by the designated operation master role only for that is the fismo role owner let's talk about global catalog server the global catalog server holds the full writable copy of objects in its host domain and the partial copy of the objects in the other domain in the same forest the partial replica contains a copy of every object in the forest and the most commonly used attributes used by queries applications and user in one domain can query for the objects in another domain via the global catalog server all domain controllers in the domain will not be a global catalog server by default when installing the first domain controller it will become the global catalog server and other domain controllers can promote them as a global catalog server accordingly according to the business requirements every domain controller in the domain does not need to be a global catalog server active directory sites the adds sites defines a physical topology of the networks sites can be separated separate buildings in a campus networks and branch offices in a separate city or even in a separate country as an example rebel admin corp has its head office located in london office uk it is running a few domain controllers dc01 and dc02 within the physical network it it uses an ip address allocated for the network with subnets 192.168.1.1 10.10.10.0/24 and 172.25.16.0/24 due to the business requirements the company opened a branch office in toronto canada it got its own domain controller dc03 and dc04 running but logically it is in the same active directory forest and domain both networks are interconnected with a lease line the canada network uses ip subnet 10.11.11.0/24 and 172.0.2.0/24 in the pre uh, in the following diagram or the slide the two offices can be called the two different sites this is because it is clearly two network segments 
the active directory logical design does not really consider physical network segments since they are in the same domain and forest 01 dc01 to dc04 should replicate changes to each other in order to maintain the healthy identity infrastructure mainly there are three benefits we can identify first one replication in a typical adds setup all domain controllers are set to replicate changes between each other assuming all are connected via fast network links but in the real world they are not sometimes connections between two sites are 256 kbps or 512 kbps the same links will be used for other enterprise operations as well using adds sites it's possible to perform bandwidth optimization and replication schedule changes for replicable replication across domain controllers second one service location in the additional active in the active directory setup there are other services integrated that helps in company operations for example active directory certificate service and exchange services using sites and the subnet setup we can point users to the nearest server for the services so users in the toronto sites are served by the microsoft exchange server in the toronto site when they try to access an email instead of passing the request to the site in london third one authentication when a user logs on to the domain they need to communicate with the domain controller for authentication in the preceding example a user on the toronto site does not need to connect to a domain controller in the london site for authentication adds site will allow you to ensure that user in toronto site will use the nearest domain controller for authentication this would reduce the latency and bandwidth through the site links active directory objects if we need to describe a person or thing we use different adjectives this can include personality ethical background physical appearance or characteristics most of these are not unique for example when you talk about a 6 feet boy there can be a lot of 6 feet boys in the city but it still explains the person that we are trying to describe is definitely not a girl if we need to uniquely identify a person or thing we need some unique attributes associated with them if it's a person the passport number telephone number or national insurance number will make the person unique from others if it's thing the serial number or barcode associated with it makes it unique with an organization there are many physical entities these can be either employees or resources in order to manage those using active directory domain services each of these physical entities needs to be presented to active directory active directory will understand these entities as objects in ad there are two types of objects container object can store other object in the active directory the domain itself is an example of a container object the organizational unit is called container object leaf objects cannot store other object in ad a service account is an example of a leaf object as we use adjectives to describe a person or a thing active directory objects needs to needs attributes to describe their name 
for example the following sin screenshot shows the wizard you will get when you create a new user account in the wizard in the following screenshot left hand side first man first name last name full name and user logon name are attributes in the same way when you create a computer account it needs a computer name attribute to describe it right hand side according to the preceding screenshots depending on the object type the associated attributes are changed as well also it doesn't matter if you create one user object or hundreds of user objects in ad you still need to use the exact same attribute to describe the object you are creating this is because each of the objects is attached to an object class within the active directory schema it is defined which attributes are attached to each object class when you sign up for the online service the first time it will provide you an online form to fill at the back end it is attached to a database the information you provided will be recorded in the database for future use if you need to sign up for the service you must provide the answer to the questions that are asked you cannot change the questions you need to answer because the database will not be able to understand it the database got a table designed with columns rows and data types to store the data that will be captured from the form similarly object class attributes are defined by schema active directory does have different types of object class user group computers printers and domain controllers are example of object class some of these objects are mandatory for object classes for example in user account creation user logon name must be provided to continue but if we do not provide the last name we can still proceed with user account creation attribute values also need to be provided with an acceptable data format that is defined by the schema sometimes due to operational requirements organizations may require custom attributes by modifying the active directory schema it is possible to add additional attributes to the object class this will be explained in the later part of the series let's talk about global unique identifiers and security identifiers in a city or organization there can be multiple people with the same name but their passport number or national insurance number will be a unique will be unique to them so in order to uh, in order to identify a person or thing accurately from a similar group we need to consider the unique value associated in the active directory database nearly 2 billion objects can be stored how will it uniquely identify each and every object every time we create an object in active directory it will be assigned with one or two unique values if it is a user or group object it will receive a global unique identifier or guid and a security identifier or sid the guid value will be saved in the object guid attribute in each object and the sid value will be saved in the object sid attribute in each object in order to view the guid and sid value for the user account the following powershell command can be run from a domain controller
Object GUID is a 128-bit value and is applied to each and every object in Active Directory. This value is not just for the particular Active Directory domain. It is valid globally as well. Once a GUID is assigned to an object, it will be there until the object is deleted from the directory. Modifying or moving object will not change the value of the GUID. The object GUID attribute value will be published to global catalog servers. If an application in the domain needs to search for a user object, the best method will be to query using object GUID as it will give an accurate result. The SID value for an object is unique within its domain. The SID value associated with the user will be changed if the user object is migrated to another domain. A SID value assigned to one domain will not be accepted by another domain. As soon as a user object is migrated to another domain, a new SID value will be generated. Then the old SID value will be saved in the SID history attribute. This attribute can contain multiple values. When the system creates a Kerberos ticket for user authentication, it will consider a new SID value and all other SID value listed in the SID history attribute. SID history is important, especially in Active Directory restructuring. The resources in the domain decide access or deny permissions to a user account based on their access control list, that is ACL. This ACL uses the SID value. So if an object moves to a different domain without its SID history, it will lose its access to resources until ACL is modified. But if the system considers SID history when gra granting access token and if the old SID value is moved over to the new domain, the user is still allowed to access the resources he she was assigned. Distinguished names. Distinguished names in Active Directory can also be used to identify an object uniquely. This is very similar to the way your postal address works. A postal address uses a hierarchical path to uniquely identify you. Starting from the country, it goes to province, then to the city, street, and house number. The same way, using the full path to the object within the directory will help you uniquely identify an object. There are three types of active directory naming attributes that have been used to generate distinguished names. Organization name, which uses O, or organizational unit name that uses OU. Organization represent the root level domain. The organization unit refer to the OU in which the object is located. Next, the domain component, that is DC. This is the naming attribute for the domain and the DNS. If the DNS name for the domain is rebeladmin.com, the domain component for it will be dc equal to rebeladmin, comma, dc equal to com. The next would be the common name, that is tcn. This refers to the object and containers within the directory. In the previous screenshot, when the query for the domain user is returned, the distinguished name for the user is as follows. DC equal to Deshaun, Francis, comma, DC, CN equal to users, DC equal to REPL admin, comma, DC equal to com. There, DC equal to REPL admin, comma, DC equal to com represents the domain name comma cn equal to user represents the user container and at the end cn equal to the shan francis represents the actual object name 
The relative distinguished name that is RDN is a unique value within its parent container. For the preceding example, the RDN for the object is CN equal to Deshaun Francis. Active Directory allows you to have the same RDN for multiple objects within the directory, but all of them need to be in separate container. It is not allowed to have the same RDN for the object within the same container. In the previous section, you learned that the SID value for the object will not be changed unless it's migrated to a different domain controller. Changing value in the object will not modify the SID value. But if the hierarchical path got changed for an object, DN will be changed. For example, if you move a user object from one OU to another, the DN value for the user object will be changed. Now let's talk about Active Directory Server roles. There are five main Active Directory Server roles. These roles are grouped together as required. Active Directory Environment in order to set up and configure Active Directory Server roles. These Active Directory Server roles are Active Directory Domain Services that is ADDS, Active Directory Federation Services that is ADFS, Active Directory Lightweight Directory Services, that is ADLDS. Active Directory Write Management Services, that is ADRMS. Active Directory Certificate Services, that is ADCS. After Windows Server 2008, these roles can be installed and configured using Windows Server Manager. It is the same in Windows Server 2016. Each of these server roles can also be installed and configured using PowerShell. The following PowerShell commandlets can be used to install Active Directory server roles. Let's talk about Active Directory domain services. In, in the previous section, uh, we, I explained what Active Directory and its components are. As a recap, I would like to list down some key points about ADDS. ADDS can manage an organization's resource in a secure, efficient manner, and it helps organize objects in a hierarchical structure. The Active Directory Forest is an identity infrastructure's security boundary, and the forest can contain multiple domains with their own directory partition. The Active Directory domain maintains a multi-master database to store data about objects and replicate it with other domain controllers in the domain. Any writable domain controllers in the domain can add, modify, or delete objects from the Active Directory database and other domain controllers will be aware about these changes. The organizational unit will be used to arrange objects in Active Directory in a hierarchical structure. It is also used to delegate permission for administrative tasks. Now let's talk about read-only domain controller. With Windows Server 2008, Microsoft introduced a new type of domain controller called as read-only domain controller or RODC. It allows organization to have domain controller in locations where data security and network security cannot be guaranteed. Domain controllers contain a writable copy of the ADDS database. It is replicated among all the domain controller in the same domain, but the read-only domain controller will have a read-only ADDS database. This feature is useful in a branch network. Not every branch office of an organization can afford a full-blown full -blown network with a high-speed leased line protected data center facilities and IT staff. If it's an Active Directory environment and if the branch office needs to be con connected to the corporate environment, engineers will need to deploy the domain controller in the branch office network too. But if the branch office has limited connection to a corporate network, less IT resources and poor physical data and network security it can be a greater security threat 
to corporate networks by developing a domain controller in that network. But developing, uh, deploying RODC will guarantee that the identity infrastructure security from such threats and users in the branch office will still be able to use the fast and reliable authentication and authorization capabilities of ADDS. RODC holds a copy of Active Directory object and attributes from writable domain controller, except the account password. If any changes needs to be done in objects, they need to be done in a writable domain controller. Sometimes the branch office may host applications that need writable uh, write capabilities to the directory services. These requests will be pointed to the writable domain controller instead of RODC. Active Directory Federation Service EDFS allows you to share identities between trusted identity infrastructure based on a claim based authentication mechanic or uh, I'm sorry claim based authorization that is CBA mechanism modern day organization workload are complicated application service providers have shifted most of their application to the cloud that is SaaS also organizations share web based system and application between them for the operations almost all these systems need some kind of authentication and authorization process to allow users to access the application or systems. This makes the identity infrastructure requirement complicated. Rebel Admin Corp is a manufacturing company. Northwood Industrial is a partner company of Rebel Admin Corp. Rebel Admin Corp has a web-based content management system to track sales leads, order, and projects. As a partner company, sales users from Northwood Industrial like to access these systems. Both companies use their own identity infrastructure. An easy way to do this is to set up an Active Directory Forest Trust between two organizations. But that is an administration and security nightmare. If Rebel Admin Corp has many partners, will it be practical to have a forest trust each and every organization? It also adds additional operation costs to facilitate secure communication links between organizations. If it is only one application, the partner company wants to access but providing trust will open up additional security threats to the rebel admin corp infrastructure adfs allows you to provide access to protected applications without any of these hassles it will trust identities from completely different identity infrastructure and pass identity information as claims to the organization that hosts the applications then the company that hosts the application will map these claims to claim that application understands and make the authorization decision. The important point here is that this process will be done with minimum changes to the infrastructure. Both organizations will keep maintaining their own identity infrastructure. Communication will happen only via an HTTPS protocol and there will be no need to open up additional firewall ports between the organization's network. In normal scenario, if you share a web-based system or application between two identity infrastructure, the partner organization needs to provide the two credentials. One credential is to authenticate it to their own infrastructure and the second one is to authenticate it to the remote infrastructure. ADFS will allow users to have a single sign-on experience to the application. Organizations today use more and more web-based applications. 
Some are for their own operations and some are claim based, claim focused, client focused, I'm sorry. If these are Active Directory integrated applications, opening them to public internet can create security threats. ADFS can also be used to provide multi-factor authentication to web-based applications. ADFS can be hosted in demilitarized zone or DMZ in the network and it will be the only public facing interface for the application. Once users successfully have There are four ADFS role services. Federation services. The Federation servers hosted oh, hosted Federation service will hosting Federation service will route authentication requests from identities in another identity infrastructure using a federated web single sign-on or from client through the internet using the web single sign-on design method. This design options will be explained in details in the later part of the series. The second role service would be Federation Service Proxy. Federation Proxy Service servers can be placed in DMZ and forward claims to the federation service located in the secure network. This adds an additional layer of security for web-based application. The third role service is claim aware agent. ADFS uses claim to create trust between two identity infrastructure. The claim aware agent can be used in the application web server to allow queries for ADFS claim. Then the application will use claims in the ADFS security token to make the authorization decision. Fourth one, Windows token based agent. The agent is to be installed on a web server that hosts Windows token based application. It will convert the ADFS security token into the Windows access token and the application will make an authorization decision based on that. These federation rules can be installed on separate servers based on the organization's federation requirement. Now let's talk about Active Directory Lightweight Directory services. Some applications require a directory enabled environment to operate, but there is no need to be in fully blown Active Directory environment. Microsoft developed ADLDS to enable data storage and retrieval for directory enabled applications without the dependencies required for ADDS. When we deploy ADDS, it keeps its own directory partition and the schema inherited from the forest. If we need an additional directory partition, it is required that you deploy another domain or child domain. But ADLDS allows you to maintain an independent schema with ADLDS, ADLDS instance. You can also host multiple ADLDS instance on one computer. ADDS and ADLDS both are built based on same core directory service technologies. ADLDS does not need to depend on the Active Directory domain or forest setup. But in an ADDS environment, ADLDS can use ADDS for authentication. Active Directory Rights Management Service ADRMS helps organization protect sensitive data getting unauthorized access. Let's say Peter received a document that contains some sensitive data about company stock price. Peter sends it to Len. We know that this should be a confidential conversation between Peter and Lynn. How can we verify that this data has not been passed on to another user? What if someone gets a printed copy of this document? 
what if len edits this and adds some false information using adrms you can prevent this kind of misuse of confidential corporate data adrms can be used to encrypt managed identities and apply unauthorized policies to your files emails and presentations this will prevent files from being copied forwarded or printed from unauthorized people this also allows file expiration and it will prevent users from viewing the data of a document over a period of time adrms contains two role servers active directory rights management server this installs the adrms server service that requires you to protect the content in the organization the second one is identity federation support adrms adrms service also supports integration of with integration with adfs services it will allow you to protect content between two organization without setting up adrms in both infrastructures this role service helps integrate adrms with adfs active directory certification services adcs helps organization build public key infrastructure that is pki in an ease cost effective way digital certificates issued by the certification authority can be used to authenticate users computers and devices the certification authority is responsible for receiving certificate requests verifying certificate requests and issuing renewing and revoking certificates these are six role services for adcs certificate authority ca mainly there are two types of ca microsoft named them as root and subordinate ca the placement of these on a network will be dependent on the pki design ca is responsible for issuing certificates to users computers and devices it will also manage the validity of certificates certification authority web enrollment this is a web interface that connects to ca in order to allow users to submit certificate request retrieve requests uh, re retrieve issued certificates and download the certificate chain online responder this will receive and respond to individual user request to verify the status of digital certificate network device enrollment service this service allows non domain join network devices to obtain certificates certificate enrollment web services this role service works with certificate enrollment policy web service and allows users and computers to perform certificate enrollment using https it also allows certificate enrollment for domain computers or devices that are not connected to the domain and computers or devices that are not part of the domain certificate enrollment policy web service This publishes the certificate enrollment policy information to users and computers. All right guys, so this was the end of the first session for Active Directory Fundamentals. See you guys in the next session. Till then, have a good one. Bye-bye.